welcome back to the channel. Just going to cover a few topics today that I think I might make individual videos for soon, especially the Mike Glover one. Donald Trump, Mike Glover, 10,000 Uber rides. So we had a quote unquote alleged assassination, assassination attempt. I'm not a Democrat or a Republican. Um, I'm not behind any of this stuff. Probably picked up a lot more of that as following my channel, listening to me here. Um, honestly, what I'm thinking right now after what it's been a couple of days is that that thing you know that happened is theater. Um, I think that just like in school and as all you know Americans are growing up from childhood to adulthood um, and the overall decade by decade by decade by decade agenda here is to really just dumb down everybody's expectations beliefs of reality and so even at 12 years old back when 9-11 happened it insulted my natural intelligence to be able to observe what I'm looking at. So um, I could see that as a strategy to break down everyone's you know, personal belief in themselves to observe what they're looking at and see things plain as day um, to a point now where we can see things plain as day and still um, take the narrative that's handed to us. So the uh, Donald Trump thing, for example, there's absolutely no way in hell in 2024 um, and that's in that basic area that they were in. I say basic because there was a lot of field space, um, trees, a handful of buildings. So it's, it's absolutely fucking impossible not to secure that for a rally. Um, basic. It's absolutely impossible. Um, it would be impossible to even have incompetence. Um, so for my own intelligence, an insult to my intelligence as I look at that and then there's just no fucking way. There's no way that that would happen. There's a bunch of fucking fat, slow-talking rednecks in one of the videos just saying, he's over there climbing up the, he's on the roof, officer. You know, one of the first things I'm thinking is where the fuck are the Americans? Where are, where are the Americans? I really don't think there's honestly very many. And if, and if America is full of, the population of America of Americans that it claims then um, the value of Americans is just very low um, so I could see it like that as America is basically a bunch of crown eaters overall you know given September 11th and how everybody responded to it um, and I've learned how people have basically responded to events for <laughs> past hundred years just to get started and I see a lot of similarities, but I see it to be worse now. So to think that, that, you know, the two towers collapsed and planes crashed into them and there's no rubble left or even care to even check if there's any rubble. Most people don't know which tower went down first and any basic details about it. It's a lot of virtue signaling about where I was on that day and I remember it. And, and this is an era that's going to be gone, you know, in a hundred years. These people won't even be able to tell those stories anymore. Um, you know, all of us will be gone. <sighs> to, to look at these things and just expect, oh, okay, two planes on... Uh, our entire military system is at face value, you know, to take it at face value, whatever they're telling us, like if that was true, uh, America's weak as fuck, you know, to deal with, to have 9-11 happen is, you know, a, a real, really a plane was hijacked and then crashed into the Pentagon. And then on top of that, there's no video of it, you know, 
or some dumbass kid is is going to take a rifle up a rooftop at a at a rally that's not in a very complicated area no so you know theater stages um even you know and and it's it's uh, a lot of it comes into what i've learned through studying marketing the psychology behind it everybody's like pissed i think it was cnn that made the the headline um you know trump falls down on stage at rally and people are outraged oh how senseless could they be and da, da, da. well that's the, you know that's what they want to do is stir you up and it's not even that they're senseless and rude which is that's one perspective to look at it is to put that headline means it's going to get massive attention okay and that's the goal that's the goal, among other things, but that's the goal. Um, it's it's smart marketing, okay? Another basic thing is a lot of news headlines, they'll put a misspelled word in there or something, and, and then you get 100 comments. Did you know that you misspelled this word? Can you not even type? Should I come work there? But what does that do? When you get all those in, it's, it's, it's smart because you get all these comments in and a ton of engagement and sharing, shit talking about it. You've worked, you know, what they call an algorithm to boost the viewership. Uh, another example is when um, Elon Musk, you know, unveiled that cyber truck and was like, oh, it's all unbreakable. And then the windows broke twice. He still never came out and admitted it. But what, what happened? It was free advertisement. It was all over every news station. It was all over the world. OK, if you're smart in marketing, you know how to do these things. Um, <laughs> This is just like the irregular warfare that we're facing. So it insults my intelligence. I know that there's others out there, um, and then only so few of them are even vocal about it. And it's hard to tell, you know, who's smarter because I, I still don't even overwrite uh, those that don't even say anything. Because maybe that's a more mature thing to do. I don't know. Um, I feel called to talk about some of it. You know, I feel called to talk about this book. Where do the towers go? But anyways, uh, that's just some thoughts on that. Maybe we'll do some follow-up. Um, Mike Glover. That This topic of, you know, his experience is something I'm going to make another video on and, um, you know, do a specific thumbnail and stuff like that on it just about, you know, an update on what's going on with him and, um, I watched one of the interviews. It was, an, I think, it was an Instagram interview. It was the best one. Um, I, he's, I know he's going to do Andy Stump, or, or already did, and it's coming out soon. Um, so we'll look at that. I, I want to keep following it. Uh, I like what he's doing as far as um, he wants to talk about it, and I think it's become a huge part of his life. He wants to keep talking about it, and I think that is the silver lining of this uh, of, of what's happened. That's going to be. I have a lot of confidence in him doing that. Um, he's a great person. Like I said, as far as the 9-11 stuff, being in the military, and it's not that I just don't like those in the military, but you know, having these platforms with these guys and just running in and assuming it's, it's all not theater, um, I, it makes me not like him. But it's not 100% black and white, like, oh, I hate everything about him, I hate everything he says, fuck him. You know, I don't think that way. Um, I probably like him more, way more than I don't, you know, so, and look at some of these, the original parts of the story as far as like there being a broken wrist and it turns out there never was one, <laughs> um, you know, and I've sat back more quiet about it for a while too, because I'm, as I'm watching, I'm like, oh, I was right, 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 I was right on all these things, um, even in some of them, just a more general sense than pinpointing exact detail, because you could see, like, you know, they're still waiting on, on more detail on things and letting him go through uh, some of this. But it's a lot of good news that things have been dropped. This doesn't happen for everybody. Um, and, I, and I put some of that on. I don't think it's like a big, pr he's privileged or anything. I, I think that he's been a hardworking man. Uh, he's, 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 um, beyond the character that he's built he's built success on his businesses and and friendships and relationships is uh, fucking worth more than money and he's able to have enough you know power behind himself and probably attorney power i'm sure 
to help get some of that stuff out of the way. So, I mean, that'll let you know there's other guys out there that don't have a dime to their fucking name like me and a lot of things that I've been through. Um, there's guys out there that have faced something that he's faced and they're gone for 30 years in prison or something. That's what he said he's facing about 30 years or something. And there's other guys out there who are fucking gone in prison for stuff like that and are, are probably um, absolutely, you know, in the same position where the, they got fucked over by a nasty system. And then, you know, Glover, he, a lot of things are dropped But they're still dealing with the the child agencies, child protective agencies, which that they're anything but. Those things are are just disgusting. They're anything but that. They're after children. They're after families. Um, in a lot of big ways, it's like all the money behind you know uh, all the money that goes into giving people jobs that are so called working on the homeless problem. Okay, well, the basic idea behind that is is you don't f- the homeless problem's not going to be fixed because all that money that's going to it and all those jobs, those people don't want to lose that. So it's going to hold that way. So that's like a sick reality of like psychology and human behavior and the way the shit's working. So same thing with this, you know, the child protective um, services in any state is those people uh, they want to make their job, they want to go do it and, and use that money that's coming in. So they, honestly, I've met them before and I've had them deal with some of my cases before personally in, um, with my first child. Um, they're disgusting. So they're going to want to do things and activate things and try and exercise uh, certain powers that they have that they shouldn't have to keep themselves a job and a status. Um, Thomas Sowell talks about in his book, Dismantling America, um, you know, there's an example of a, a rape case at a university where lacrosse players were accused of rape by a, some stripper. And they were, there was massive evidence showing that they were not guilty. And there were not only was the um, prosecutor hell bent on prosecuting them and hiding evidence, because he, because where's the psychology and the greed behind that? He wants to up his status and go on somewhere else, so it doesn't fucking matter to him what happens to other human beings. And then the the crowd on that case was like, hey, well, we don't, you know, there was there's quotes of people saying, well, we don't care if they're even innocent or not. We should make an example out of them because other people do it. And it's like it's disgusting. So really, the human behavior behind things is the bigger picture than each event is. Like I said in the last Mike Glover video, I showed an example of a kid at a school, looked like a, maybe a eighth grade or early high school or something. Um, nobody in the crowd in the school gives a shit that this this girl's walking around pushing and swinging at this boy, and he's just saying stop, stop. He's walking away from her, walking away from her, stop. Nobody gave a shit until he he had finally got hit enough that he turned around and rocked her, and then her friend that jumped in, he smacked her up too, just rocked her. I feel bad for the kid in that position. Um, and then what immediately happened? All of a sudden, everybody who w- wasn't paying attention, boys start rushing and never hit a woman, and they're ready to just tear them apart. Um, you know, if all those kids were alone on an island, um, that kid probably would have got hung, you know? That's like the behavior. That's that's what, like the things that we're looking at. 9-11 is a magnificent event. It's huge. There's so many amazing things about it that happen. But it's really been a big psychology course for me on human behavior, um, group think attitude, lack of critical thinking skills, and then fear of implications of the truth. So, and then what else did I say? Um, so on that, we're for Mike Glover. I'm glad to see where it's going. I know it's painful to be without your children for five minutes, given circumstances where you don't know if you're going to see them again. Um, even for a long time. So he's facing over 60 days or something right now, probably over 70, 80 days. Uh, it's it's treacherous, um, and I understand that. You know what? And I, I've got a, a 15-year-old daughter I haven't seen in five years. Luckily, I understand the um, power of video, and I text message her. That's like the only thing I can do is send her text message. I'm not, I can't even, I'm not allowed to call her. I'm not allowed to go to her school, graduation. I lost legal custody. So it's disgusting. Like if she gets in some accident, some life-threatening accident or something, um, I wouldn't even, I don't have any legal 
parentship over that, you know, to, to show up, to be there, to have any decision making. It's disgusting. It's terrible. It makes me sick. You know, it makes me sick. How, you know, five years is a long time not to see a child. It's disgusting. I worry about her every second of every day. Um, I understand a lot about what what Mike's gone through. You know, I, he went to jail for seven days. I went to jail for seven days. Um, you know, he got some of the guys on doing push-ups and meditating and stuff in there. And it's funny, I had the same thing happen to me in there. I went in with a different touch of character and spirit. Um, you know, Mike had run-ins with some of the officers in there that were just kind of miraculous in a way. Same thing happened to me. There's a different energy about some of us. Um, it's not that we're better than anybody else. It's just some of the things we're focusing on, the perspective, the mindset, and the character and the spirit we built in ourselves that is uh, reachable or other people can feel that. Um, there were some sheriffs in there that, that recognized me when I was in there, that um, there was a few things that happened with me because of going to the gym. Um, another guy was just a young guy about my age, and he you know, picked me up out of one of the public cells and, and put me in an inmate labor cell where... Um, I ended up being able to get out of my cell for, uh, I think, several hours a day, like passing out food and then, um, you know, getting in and doing the laundry in the laundry area and stuff like that. So I had, had, had this different road. You know, I, I was an outlier. So there's a lot of things I relate to. I actually want to rewatch that interview. Um, I was just, you know, taking the mental notes on it, and I just don't remember enough of it. I know there's more things that I definitely wanted to cover to just to pull off as far as relation to it and understanding Mike. Uh, one of the things was him being talked off the ledge, you know, by his friends, and, and that's that's how I ended one of those videos. I think it was the first, you know, part one and part two that I made. I ended it with saying, check on Mike. So that's good that um, his, you know, people were doing that. Is important and he, and visually like each time I see him on camera right now he's looking better and better and that's why I say you know that that's what um, the basis of, of why I'm on this platform you know for many reasons but the, the main one I'm writing in, in the bio descriptions of, of all of my platforms is survive parental alienation and there's a lot of things that come with it it's not just being alienated by your child or your family or your life there's a lot of things that go with it, and that's why I said survive it because it, you got to be a survivor to deal with that stuff. So, um, and just like with Mike um, and and others, you know, when you haven't been through it, it's it's invisible. You know, you don't know it's a monster right there under our noses, just like 9/11, just like this stupid theater stuff with Trump. And there's monsters that they're right under our noses. It's it's a regular warfare. You know, the family is the target. You break up the family, then you can you can mold the future of the people however you want to. Um, and then one of the other topics I'm going to be talking about, probably you know many things that just there's a lot of things that you guys I haven't shared, especially with anybody maybe knows more about me that follows along closer. Is I haven't shared so much about my family law journey. Like you guys don't even know me yet, basically on that. Um, uh, I think it's going to be really helpful for a lot of people to for me to continue to articulate that, tell story after story. And then, um, you know, one of the things about me is that um, Uber and Lyft driving. Um, and even Lyft driving is something I'm, i i got to do right now to, to bring money in. You know, I'm still financially struggling at 35. Um, but I, I did it in San Diego. I started in Bakersfield, California, and then I... And then I made it to San Diego. I did a hundred thousand miles in one of my old vehicles. Um, why is it slipping my mind right now? Chevy Equinox. And I slept in the thing. People would have never known. I slept in the thing at night. It was very organized, very squared away, very clean. Um, people had no idea. I put a hundred thousand miles on that car in a year. I slept in it for maybe over a month, maybe close to two months or so um, before I, I got in a really cool apartment with a really cool old surfer dude, artist um, in San Diego. And while I was there, uh, I, I probably made, I don't know, maybe 40,000, 45,000 or something in like four to six, the first four to six months. Um, I did like seven to 8,000 trips with Uber and maybe 2,500 with Lyft. 
Um, that's a big experience. I might write a small book about that. Um, I'm going to talk about it in videos and so many different aspects that go with it. What kind of job it is, how I felt doing it all the time, how I felt doing it while being homeless, how I felt doing it while, you know, just living in an apartment and feeling like I needed to catch up and be successful for so many other reasons, so many different reasons. You know, one, uh, you know, catching up to my peers or feeling, you know, better and more quality as far as the dating scene at the time when I was single because there's a lot of depressing things I went through as far as questioning you know, how am I going to handle the things I'm handling? It wasn't just getting by as a young man on his own. Like at the same time, I was dealing heavily with family court, uh, massive family court um, problems just while I was trying to do that. I made it out of homelessness again at the time and was just being s severely harassed, trespassed on my civil liberties and things in the family court and still by my kid's mother. I would drive... Uh, you know, almost 250 miles, you know, from San Diego back up into Bakersfield to go see my daughter only to pick her up from after school and have her for maybe an hour and a half. And her mother would still go to the school and take her out against the court order just so I couldn't see her. And the piece of shit school that had the court order with them would still let her leave with the mother. I probably could sue the shit out of the school. But there's so many different things just trying to make it out of homelessness pay a high interest rate on my vehicle I had at the time, 450 bucks a month, just back in 2016, 2017, 2018, uh, for a little Chevy Equinox, ridiculous, you know, and then high rent in San Diego, I was paying 850 a month just for one bedroom, um, and that was cheap for, for what I got out of it. Um, but then there's just so many other stories as far as the people I met in there, um, People I met in there from people who are very successful to people who were, um, you know, one of the profound things I, I saw being out there was having people sing um, to some of the songs that were playing on the radio while we were driving. Maybe they had drinks, maybe it was on a weekend, maybe it wasn't. That was just a weird, it was a profound connection to, to just kind of even hear that and meet people like that and hear that good spirit just, just driving around listening to strangers just sing men and women, you know, or groups of people, stories I heard from people. People would meet me and be psychotic within two minutes. People would meet me and they would be crying, telling me a story about themselves in 10 minutes, 20 minutes, you know, uh, just so many different experiences I, I had with people there. People that helped me that I met there, people that I helped when I was doing that, things that I did above and beyond being a driver back then that I did for some of the people to help out, um, providing a ground level service for people doing that. So there's a lot of different stories to get into that. I'm going to try and retap into some of those things. I wish I would have had more of a journal or notes on it, but I'm even still doing it again right now because that's what I need to do to, to make sure money's coming in because um, I don't have money coming in through... Uh, this coaching. I don't have money coming in through digital marketing. You go, you go to my Facebook page, it says marketer at high activity online and coach at American Fathers. I mean, both of those are like, in so many words, failing businesses. And I don't consider them a failure. I just consider them, you know, they're, they're there. There are opportunities I've set up for myself, but they're not pulling in success right now. They're not pulling in a dime. Um, but that's all right. But that's the truth. You know, self honesty, self mastery, self exposure is personal development. Um, so that's just what I'm thinking and I've got a couple of books I'm working on we were going to just blast through this one Iron John I love this book and then um, and a big thanks to Trevor who's uh, recommended it and then I, but there's another author and I got a book in Lou Baldwin um, and it's one of those things that the way this guy is writing that as soon as I get another one of his books in I'm reading it all the way through first so I'll just put this one out of the way and if I get another one that comes in I'm going to read that one first but then you know Iron John I want to get done um, so these are reviews that are coming up. This one's probably going to be first, Judas Crucified. So some of the stuff I'm working on, book reviews, we're going to make it through the Will and Ariel Durant series probably over a longer period of time. And we're finishing up Where Did the Towers Go? I've, I've obviously made an impact with Andrew Johnson who helped publish this book with Dr. Judy Wood. And that's a huge honor for me. My name was put on a list in an article that he wrote saying thanks to those who've helped in any way. And mine was just in the most minute way of all. 
Um, I'm really appreciative of that. I think it's great, and I think it's a little bit of an encouragement, obviously, to just keep going. And then I'm reading it word for word, chapter by chapter, to help people understand where the towers went or what's all behind that. Um, you know, and that's what I do as far as offering as a coach. Saturday meetings, 2 p.m. Pacific time. Come show up to those. Talk about what's going on for you as a father in your life. Uh, mothers are welcome to, you know, facing parental alienation. Talk through some of that stuff. Help you avoid mistakes. Help you navigate some uh, frustrations that can happen with it. Just like with Mike Glover's going through, you know, and he's very honest about a lot of his feelings. Is it's it becomes a survival issue, and and it's not only for you who are very important. It's even more important is for the, these children that are growing up because children don't deserve any of it. Um, daily exercise. So I've been off and on in the gym, not out of laziness, but just out of trying to get other things organized in my life. And so and I've been back in the gym now for almost a week, just every day. Well, muscle group, muscle activation. I've got you know over 20 years of experience in that. I've been certified several different times and different types of certifications for personal training, strength and conditioning. Um, studied bodybuilding for so long. That's where I learned most of my stuff from, like Jay Cutler. So to sh keep sharing that stuff with you guys in a coaching atmosphere, coupled with you know being a better parent, surviving parental alienation, daily exercise is massive. It's not only massive for life as a foundation anyways, but especially for surviving facing some of these troubles in the family court. So that's what I can personally serve others with through my experience, help you out. So that's what I offer is coaching. Hit any of the links below this video in the description. Um, go through the website, you can talk to me there. Even better, go to Instagram, American Father, send me a message over there, check in on what I'm doing over there, highlights as far as what's going on in my life over there, and then the stories, daily behind the scenes stuff. You know, just checking in throughout the day thoughts throughout the day if you want to see what I'm doing say hi over there and uh, so we'll keep picking up you know Monday Wednesday Friday is, is my goal for these videos I'm gonna see if I can't get some um, up and scheduled way ahead of time so we stop missing with those and then continue on with book reviews personal development reading to investigate reality get perspective on the world all right thanks for watching you guys I appreciate you for being here and um, I enjoy it. Hopefully we can bring good out of experience and accept hardships and challenges, not dwell in depression or anger or sadness, but accept the path, however tough it is or unfair it is, no matter our mistakes we've made or the great intent and you could have been a great person the whole time, like I see myself have been with throughout my life. Um, not fair, but you know, dwelling on it's only going to end up killing me, and I'm not going to do that. You know, I'm not going to ruin my life or ruin anybody else's life, or seek revenge on anybody through any of that stuff. But accept the path and learn from it as something that's being handed to me as something I need to learn in my life. So I think it's a good way to look at it. Hope you can do the same. Keep checking in here, share it uh, with somebody you think it'll help. Like the video, subscribe. See you guys on the next one.